Yoko's still got a coconut. With a surprising burst of energy, Benny goes after him again. The commotion attracts the attention of another older female, Reren. Who comes in with the heavy artillery. At Forest School, the scene is all set for Muliono's snake awareness lesson. The call has gone out for milk time, and the babysitters move into position. With 160 snake species in Borneo, this lesson is critical in teaching the students that snakes are to be feared. Everything is ready. But no one's taking the bait. So the babysitters help the lesson along. They give it their all to reinforce the fear factor. Everyone remembers their training and flees to the safety of the trees. But this time, the tree isn't safe. <laughs> Luckily, no one is hurt, as the orangutans have learned how to react when a tree breaks, which is common in the forest. <laughs> Muliono is especially impressed by Letta and Rusini's acting performances. As Muliono leaves, the friends comfort each other in the aftermath of a lesson they'll hopefully never forget. Milk time brings everyone together, including ever hopeful Benny. He's still on a strict diet, as he's twice the weight of classmates his own age, due to his insatiable appetite. Six months ago, Benny discovered the secret stash of Banana Mountain. Quick action by babysitter Shri stopped him doing too much damage to his diet and his health, much to his annoyance. <laughs> Benny's diet is for his own good, but all he knows is that yet again, everyone gets a milk drink, except him. Babysitter Murney has a cunning plan, however, to stop him feeling left out without breaking his diet. <laughs> Benny finally gets his turn. Although it looks as though he suspects he's not getting the real deal. Benny? His weight loss plan is proving difficult for everybody. 
he's a clever food thief. But his real forte is his begging routine. This face is hard to resist. But with his weight still hovering around 66 pounds, babysitter Icha isn't going to be moved. Only healthy greens are on offer. Much to Benny's disgust. Come Benny. Even Shiro's example can't persuade this banana-loving boy to change his ways. In Forest School Group 1, today's workshop is nest building. So far, the students have learned the fundamentals on the safety of the ground. Today, the two to three-year-olds will learn how to construct nests in the branches. Meryl's up first. She watches as Letta lays the framework. But doesn't seem terribly impressed. laid-back approach. Letta tries to keep Meryl engaged. But she exits the lesson, taking half the nest with her. Perhaps three-year-old Fatia will be a better student. She piles the leaves up layer upon layer, just as she saw her babysitter doing. Flattening it out is the fun part. Being able to eat your bedding is one advantage of being an orangutan. Finally, she decides her nest is complete. Fatia has made great strides today, while Meryl is falling behind. Borneo is home to around 160 species of snake, many of them venomous including this keel pit viper that strayed into the compound from the surrounding forest. The staff quickly captured the intruder, and Muliono has decided it's time for Group 4's lesson in snake awareness. Muliono doesn't usually attend forest school classes, so as soon as they spot him, the students can tell this is no ordinary lesson. Jumbo and Yoko try to scare him off. Litty, Lanting and Chinta are the bravest. And then little Eric joins Chinta for a closer look. This snake is rubber, but it looks real enough to the orangutans. response is just what Muliono hoped for. Terrorising these youngsters may look mean, but one day this lesson could save their lives. 
At the new arrivals quarantine class, Tiny Tot Topan is about to receive her first lesson. Baby orangutans start learning from their mothers on day one. So it's never too early for a gentle tutorial. Orangutans mainly stay hydrated from all the fruit they eat. But they do use tools to collect water. Topan isn't keen. So Mia decides to try something a bit more exciting. Borneo is a biodiversity hotspot for carnivorous pitcher plants. The fluid inside traps insects that provide nutrients for the plants and can also serve as a great thirst quencher. <laughs> Topan, however, has a different priority. <laughs> morning at the Group 3 classroom. And already the temperature is well over 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The babysitters have brought basket loads of papaya leaves for a healthy snack today. But one of the students is planning an alternative use for his leaf. Five-year-old Otan is affectionately known as the Fluffy Ninja. He's small for his age, inventive and curious. When there was something terrifying under the sack at snake school, Otan accidentally revealed it. Today, he's going to wear his leaf. It's not a fashion statement, though. It's sheltering him from the hot sun. As is often the case in jungle school, Otan's experiment catches on. Valentino copies. And so does Junior. These leaves were supposed to be a snack. Turning them into sun hats shows what creative thinkers orangutans are. And of course, they imitate each other. The trend spreads like wildfire. Valentino is first to take things to another level. Hat stealing. In the wild, young orangutans learn most skills through imitating their mothers. Here, there are many variations on what the orphan students can learn from each other. Valentino remembers that you can actually eat these leaves as well. Chinta, never one to follow the crowd, uses hers as a plate to catch her turnip scraps. Benny turns up and seems unimpressed by Valentino's look. The new Benny is way too mature for this. He's off to climb a tree, an activity usually too energetic for this plump orangutan. But he's giving it a go. Compared with the exertions of his classmates, Benny's style is low-key. All that clambering and vine-swinging. Wow! 
way too much effort. It's the last lesson at Forest School for the day. And some older students have come to visit their friends in Group 2. Valentino, Eutris and Madara join their older idol, Chinta, on an adventure through the ferns. And there's a surprise waiting for them. There's something not right. Penty reassures the youngsters. But Chinta has a suspicion as to what this might be. Bravely, she takes the lead. Four-year-old Otan arrives late to the fear fest. And he thinks this sack looks good. Just in time, Technisi Muliono comes to the rescue and beats his special rubber teaching aid to death. The Group 2 kids have never had snake awareness class before, and today they responded perfectly. In primates, recognition of snakes is instinctive, but fear of snakes is learned. Which is why Muliono tours this lesson around the forest school groups. It's a lesson they won't forget. At the Group 1 classroom, the babysitters have a plan for the flooded pool to teach a new lesson in food gathering. Vegetables on stilts are a genius take on the famous fruit kebab, designed to encourage students to master pond foraging in the wet season. Malika gets it. Extra support from Letta gives Malika the confidence to try this new step towards her wild future. Now it's Timper's turn for a lesson. She's always been a little water baby. Letta shows Timper how to scoop water. She watches intently, but she can't quite grasp. How does one hold water? Just as she's had enough, she has a breakthrough. Figuring out how to use a tool to hold water is a simple but useful concept that both humans and primates need to learn. Letta is very proud of her little student. These two share a true bond, and Timper isn't shy about her affections. Over at Jungle School, forest groups two and three are taking class together. 
Today's challenge is to master the two-stage process of opening a coconut. First, husking. Then, nut cracking to access the sweet milk and the meat. Four-year-old Yoko is a Group 3 student and he's got this down. His secret is to grip with hands and feet. Yoko's skill attracts a spectator. Benny loves coconuts as much as bananas. But he usually relies on his babysitter to open them. Benny reverts back to an old habit. He's not really a bully, just a very hungry food thief. Nine-year-old Rinto turns up from Group 5 to police this coconut conflict. Rinto decides Benny should have no coconut at all. Nope, not getting this one either. Poor Benny. All he's left with is a pile of sodden greens. It's not fair. Yoko's still got a coconut. With a surprising burst of energy, Benny goes after him again. The commotion attracts the attention of another older female, Reren. Who comes in with the heavy artillery. She wastes no time in punishing Benny. Things are getting out of hand. The delivery of more coconuts ends the brawl. Benny's left with just an empty husk and his low social status. He's not impressed. First lesson of the day is boyo, or fruit time. Orangutans naturally spend up to six hours a day foraging for food. So breakfast doubles as a perfect learning opportunity. This morning's lesson is in coconut cracking. Orangutans learn from example, so their caregiver shows them how it's done. Moomut, a little male, catches on immediately while Valentino has a more interpretive approach. With his distinctive pale belly stripe, Valentino is the class clown of Forest School Group 1. What he lacks in technique, he makes up for in exuberance. But when the puzzle proves too hard to crack, Valentino does exactly what he would do if he was in the wild. Asks mum for help. Valentino was found alone in a forest as a baby after his mum was killed. Babysitter Letta is currently his foster mother and she knows Valentino must learn to do this on his own if he's to ever graduate from jungle school.
Nearby, the students of Forest Group 2 are incrementally more skillful. It's not so much age that divides Groups 1 and 2, but ability. Little Merrill has learned how to husk her coconut so she can enjoy the sweet milk. But not for long. Opportunistic Valentino moves in to share. He may not be the best at coconut cracking, but learning how to reap the rewards of others' hard work could be an excellent survival skill. Three-year-old Benny has a more laid-back approach. He's exercising his jaws as his powerful teeth scrape the coconut shell. But there's not a lot of other energy being exerted. He doesn't even flinch as Merrill helps herself to his leftovers. Little does Benny know that his expanding girth hasn't gone unnoticed. And he's about to be put on a diet. <laughs> 